Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is the practical pathology series. Looking at the illustrations, I am sure by now you would have understood that I am going to talk about yes, urinary crystals. So I call this topic urinary crystals decoded. So in the next 15 to 20 minutes, we will see what is the definition of crystal urea, what are the various causes of crystal urea, what are the conditions associated with crystal urea and how to identify these crystals in urine by appreciating the various morphological features. Now, the presence of crystals in urine is referred to as crystal urea. So crystal urea is a very frequent finding in the routine examination of urine sediments. I am sure you all know whenever the urine sample is received in the laboratory, it goes through a physical examination, chemical examination and then the microscopic examination, okay, the microscopic study. The microscopic study includes, you know, looking for the RBCs, the WBCs, the epithelial cells, the various cars, the bacteria and crystals. Today in this tutorial, I will be talking about only this aspect that is examination of crystals in urine sediments. Now, what are all the common reasons for crystal urea? Is finding a crystal always pathological? No, absolutely not. That's because crystals can be seen whenever there is transient supersaturation of the urine, right? So it can be seen whenever there is an ingestion of certain kind of foods which are rich in oxalates, can be due to ingestion of uh, drugs like ascorbic acid. Most importantly, it's because of changes of urine temperature and or pH which occurs upon standing after the collection of sample. For example, you can see evidence of precipitation of urates and phosphates particularly when the sample is refrigerated. Okay? There can be precipitation of calcium phosphates when the pH increases. That too when, the, when there is any you know, suspicion of urinary tract infection, if you keep the sample for longer duration, the bacteria in the urine multiplies and this causes increase in pH and that's how the calcium phosphate precipitates. So we'll all discuss these and study these in detail while we discuss each of these crystals. So what you should remember is that urine examination should be done as early as possible after the collection of the sample. Okay, It should be done in the temperature as close to that of the body temperature. Never think of you know studying crystals in a refrigerated sample. That's very important to understand. It has to be studied as early as possible after the collection of the sample. Now, what are all the pathological conditions where crystals seen in urine? Of course, one important thing is urolithiasis. Urolithiasis means the formation of calculi in the urinary system. It can be because of nephropathy, that is deterioration of renal function, particularly uric acid nephropathy, that's because of you know, accumulation of uric acid. It can be seen in poisoning, particularly acute ethylene glycol poisoning. Various drugs are also implicated in the occurrence of urinary crystals. In this tutorial, I am not discussing about the drug-induced crystal urea. So we will see what are all the other crystals which are important for us to understand. Now, how to identify the crystals in urine? The most important is you should have a proper approach before you even look at the various crystals, the various morphological aspects. You should be able to know what is the important prerequisite before you even venture into examination of urinary crystals. The most important one being the knowledge of pH of urine. That is because you find certain crystals which are commonly found in acidic urine, certain crystals which are commonly found in alkaline urine. Now let, let, let me list out the crystals which are found in acidic urine and then the alkaline urine. So these are the crystals, the calcium oxalate crystals, the uric acid crystals, the amorphous urates, the cysteine, tyrosine, leucine, cholesterol, they are all found in acidic urine. And these are the ones, the phosphates, the calcium carbonate, the ammonium biurate are all the ones which are found in alkaline urine. Now, you see that these are the ones which are marked in red. Remember, these crystals are never seen in normal urine. If you find any of these four crystals, it is always pathological. The rest of the crystals, it can be seen in even normal urine. It is the number and amount of crystals of these you know, normal uh, crystals which determines whether it is pathological or not. How do you examine crystals? Face contrast microscopy is the best to study crystals. But unfortunately, this is not 
available in most of the places that's why it's always good to know how these crystals look under bright field microscopy this is what specifically i'm going to explain the entire uh, topic on crystals from now on will be how these crystals look under bright field microscopy now let us see one by one the first and the most important crystals we find in urine is calcium oxalate crystals look at this these are the calcium oxalate crystals these are colorless crystals they are birefringent crystals when they are observed under polarizing light so there are of two forms you know they are calcium oxalate dihydrate forms and then the calcium oxalate monohydrate form monohydrate forms see these calcium oxalate dihydrate forms are the ones which are classical envelope shaped crystals okay whereas the calcium oxalate monohydrate forms are they are hourglass like or even dumbbell shaped crystals they are hourglass or dumbbell shaped crystals so the other, the other morphological forms of calcium oxalate can be you know they are elongated forms they can be oval forms they can be round or spherical forms so these are the various morphological forms of, of calcium oxalate crystals remember these are colorless crystals so what are the conditions where you find these calcium oxalate as i told you it can be seen in normal urine it can be seen in conditions where the person has ingested lots of diet rich in oxalates particularly spinach patient with lots of acute uh, you know uh, uh, ingestion of ascorbic acid the most important one you need to know is acute ethylene glycol poisoning what type of crystals you see you can see either forms whether it is calcium oxalate dihydrate and monohydrate forms both can be seen in acute ethylene glycol poisoning of course finally it is seen in urolithiasis you know the calcium oxalate stones are the most common type of renal stones the second important crystals are the ones which are referred to as amorphous forms so when i say amorphous which means there is no morphology for these type of crystals they are they look like dust you know these are amorphous urates and amorphous phosphate these amorphous phosphates are tricalcium and trimagnesium phosphates so the urine sample you know when it is allowed to stand or if you centrifuge this kind of sample which contains amorphous ur urates it appears in the bottom as brownish red precipitate or brownish red sediment it's also called as brick dust okay macroscopically in the bottom of the urine container you know or the test tube if you see this brick dust as i mean always think that you are dealing with amorphous urates whereas amorphous phosphates upon standing or upon centrifugation it is gray white sediment so macroscopically if it is brick dust type of sediment it is amorphous urates if it is gray white sediment it is amorphous phosphates amorphous amorphous urates are always found in acidic urine in contrast amorphous phosphates are found in alkaline urine remember as i told you earlier these are the kinds of you know uh, amorphous forms which precipitates more so when the urine sample is refrigerated okay so refrigeration increases precipitation so never look for crystals in a refrigerated you know, sample so the next important crystal which we'll be discussing is the uric acid crystals so these are all the various morphological forms of uric acid crystals so in contrast to the earlier two crystals which we saw this crystal is having some color right so yes this is a colored crystal which can be a barrel shape it can be a diamond shape so this is a barrel shaped crystal it can be a rosette shape shape or even a diamond shape these are usually orange brown or yellow in color okay they are best observed under bright field microscopy when do you see these kind of crystals they are found in normal urine where the patient consumes lots of protein rich diet you no know? this protein rich diet is the one which increases uric acid in urine so that's how you find these uric acid crystals so the next important crystals are the amino acid crystals so remember i am showing this red sphere that means these are all the abnormal crystals or pathological crystals the first one being cysteine crystals these crystals are again colorless crystals they are hexagonal plates okay they are very thin plates hexagonal plates they can be seen singly or they can be seen placed one upon the other okay they are always found in acidic urine the conditions where you find cysteine uh, crystals is 
सिस्टीनी हो रहा आई टोल्ड यू प्रेजेंस ऑफ सिस्टीन इज ऑलवेज पैथोलॉजिकल प्रेजेंस ऑफ सिस्टीन क्रिस्टल्स इज ऑलवेज पैथोलॉजिकल इट्स फाउंड इन अ कंडीशन कॉल्ड सिस्टीन यूरिया विच इज एन इनरेटेड कंडीशन विच इज रिजल्ट ड्यू टू द म्यूटेशन इन द एस एल सी थ्री ए वन एंड द एस एल सी सेवन ए नाइन जीन्स ओके सो इन चिल्ड्रन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉज ऑफ कैलकुले रीजनल कैलकुले इज बिकॉज ऑफ सिस्टाइन सो यू फाइंड सिस्टाइन स्टोन एज अ फ्रीक्वेंट कॉज ऑफ कैलकुले इन चिल्ड्रन रिमेंबर दीज क्रिस्टल्स आर हेक्सगोनल थीन प्लेट्स सो द नेक्स्ट वन इज द कोलेस्टरॉल क्रिस्टल हाउ डू दे लुक लाइक दे दे आर ऑल्सो कलरलेस क्रिस्टल्स इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू द हेक्सगोनल शेप ऑफ सिस्टाइन क्रिस्टल्स द कोलेस्ट्रॉल क्रिस्टल्स आर रेक्टेंगुलर प्लेट्स okay so these are rectangular plates and what you appreciate is these notches so you can find these notches in one or more corners and again they are found in acidic urine remember you should never get confused these cholesterol crystals for the glass fragments of your cow slip okay they are always almost always found in cases of nephrotic syndrome you know nephrotic syndrome is a pathological entity where there is massive proteinuria along with extensive amounts of lipidinuria that is lipiduria so this is the kind of crystals which actually you know they appear more uh, commonly they appear more after the sample has been refrigerated in contrast to what i told never observe for you know crystals in refrigerated sample this is one type of crystal which is seen more when the sample is refrigerated that is cholesterol crystal of course you can find these crystals even in unrefrigerated sample so the next important uh, uh, crystal which is an again which is again an amino acid crystal is tyrosine crystals which are which can be colorless or most often they are yellow brown colored crystals these are needle shaped crystals these needles can be straight needle or they can be bent needles they are arranged almost always arranged in sheaves or in bundles again they are found in acidic urine conditions where you find tyrosine crystals are tyrosinemia tyrosinemia is a defect in metabolism it's a, it's a, it's it's an inborn error of metabolism where the body is not able to metabolize tyrosine that's how you, there is accumulation of tyrosine and then excretion of tyrosine in urine in various liver diseases again you find these crystals in almost all kind of liver diseases you find these amino acid crystals now the next important amino acid crystal is the leucine crystal again it's a pathological crystal it is a colored crystal okay this is a colored crystal found in acidic urine they are yellowish brown colored how do they look they look like concentric rings with radial striations okay so you find these concentric rings of along with that you also find the radial striations very classical of leucine crystals where do you find leucine crystals they are found in conditions of severe liver diseases okay now till now we talked about the various crystals which are found in acidic urine right we talked about oxalate uric acid amorphous urates and all the pathological crystals we have complete abnormal crystal cysteine tyrosine leucine and cholesterol crystals now let's move on to understand the crystals which we find in alkaline urine of course we did discuss about the amorphous phosphates while i was talking about amorphous urates right so let us see the crystals which are found in alkaline urine the most important one being the calcium phosphate crystals so how do they look they are colorless crystals they are rectangular or wedge shaped crystals the peculiar feature of these crystals are the arrangement of these crystals they are fan shaped arrangement right they can also crystallize in a plate form how when when does it occur they can crystallize into a plate form with irregular corners particularly when the sample is alkaline or even slightly acidic urine okay how where do you find these calcium phosphate crystals they can be found in healthy individuals one or two calcium phosphate crystals can be seen but if you see lots of them you think of pathology particularly urinary tract infections so the next one is triple phosphate crystals so that's how triple phosphate crystals look like again they are found in alkaline urine they are colorless crystals how do they look they are most often they are elongated i mean they look like calcium oxalate crystals like right but then they are elongated as compared to that of envelope shape these are prism shaped crystals they are also referred to as coffin lid shape or prism prism shaped crystals okay they can be found in healthy individuals if you find too much of these calcium and triple phosphate crystals think 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 that you are dealing with the case of urinary tract infections so these are precipitated in urinary tract infections 
So the next one is ammonium biurate crystals. What are these crystals? Look at this. These are very beautiful crystals, right? They are colored crystals. They are found in alkaline urine again. They are yellow brown or brown colored crystals. The morphology of these crystals are spherical bodies with protrusions. Does it look similar to something else? Some fruit? Yes, it looks like a thorn apple. So these crystals looks like thorn apple. Remember, thorn apple, if you come across in any of your MCQs, think about ammonium biurate crystals. So they can be seen in normal urine. It indicates that this urine sample is very old or even a poorly preserved urine. But even pathological conditions, you can find ammonium biurate crystals. It can occur together with triple phosphates and calcium phosphates whenever there is a condition of bacterial urinary tract infection that too particularly with a urease positive bacteria so it can be normal or pathological if you find them too often or too many of them in the urine sample now we completed the morphological features of crystals which are found in acidic urine and which are found in alkaline urine right so what i have highlighted is these are the crystals which are colored crystals remember uric acid is a colored crystal amorphous they are they are you know yellowish brown or orange colored crystals right they are diamond shaped or barrel shaped crystals amorphous urates remember brick dust precipitate or brick dust sediment right tyrosine crystals they are brown needle shaped crystals leucine you know can you remember that concentric rings with radial striations and ammonium biurate these are brown which are which looks like thorn apple so these five crystals are colored crystals rest of them are colorless crystals so now we studied the crystals in acidic urine crystals in alkaline urine crystals which are colorless crystals which are colored right so what is the take home message Remember, identifying crystals under a microscope does not guarantee that they were present in the urinary system. Why do I say that? Because these crystals can continue to form after collection, continue to form even after maturation. Isn't it? That's what we saw. It can precipitate due to variations in temperature and the pH. Now, that is why we tell crystals are not always pathological. You can find one or two crystals. Of course, you need to understand those pathological forms. Okay, so it's very important to know, know, know the abnormal forms and their morphology to identify the underlying disease. So I'm sure um, this 10 or 15 minutes video helped you to understand the concepts of various urinary crystals and I'm sure you can appreciate these morphological forms of crystals whenever you find chance to see them. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button, do comment, don't forget to subscribe, do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.